It's Annie Grace. Hope everybody is doing good. I have um, a reader's question that I'm going to answer today. And the question is, hi, Annie. I find myself comparing myself to other people in the Facebook group. Basically, I see people who are easily changing and who have just read the book and are suddenly free. And I don't understand why I am having such a hard time changing. I read the book I take 30 days off and then on day 31, I drink again. And then I'll do the alcohol experiment a few months later and the same thing. And I feel like I have to keep coming back to this and can't make any sustainable changes. I know it's not physical because I can easily take the 30 days, but something in my brain tells me around day 31 or day 32 that it's a good idea to start to moderate again. And then I'm back to where I started. And I really, truly want it to be done with this for good. I'm so sick of this. and I'm really tired of looking around me and seeing all of this instantaneous success, which I can't relate to. Do you have any input or advice for why this might be happening? So uh, what a great question. And first of all, I think that we, especially on social media, we post the best of what's happening for us. We post the absolute, like the wins. And of course that's great. It's super important to post our wins, but sometimes we post only our wins. And so what you don't see, like when I quit, it was on a dime and it was so easy and it was so effortless, but it was preceded by a year's worth of research. And then that was preceded by multiple years of trying to drink less and not succeeding at that. And so there was this whole history before the moment. And, um, you know, I've heard it, I, I was on a podcast and interviewing, um, I forget what her name is, but we were talking and she's like, you know what? I tried to quit and 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 I kept trying. And then one day it, it took one day I actually quit one day it was actually done. So I think a big part of this is actually just persistence. And sometimes the only way you can fail at this is by stopping trying. I, I really believe that's true. And sometimes every single iteration, every single twist and turn, we are learning more and more and more about ourselves. You know, we think that change happens here, we're, we're beginning, and then it's just all up and to the right. And especially when we're seeing other people on social media saying, oh yeah, I did it, it's so easy. I just read the book and now I like can be out at bars and drinking and my seltzer and everybody else is drinking alcohol. It's super easy. Like we don't know, first of all, the backstory. And number two, we see that and we think, okay, it's just easy. It's this linear thing. The truth is that change is like this loop-de-loop. -loop. Like we, we move forward and then we step backward and then we, we go forward and then we have two steps backwards and everybody's path is really, truly different. So that's, you know, the big picture, but there's some really tangible reasons why this is true also. First, is three levels of belief I believe you have around alcohol. And I would categorize those three levels of belief as society, substance, and self. So substance is the belief about the actual substance. So alcohol does something in my body. Alcohol relaxes me. Alcohol makes things more fun. And a lot of what we do in this Naked Mind and the Alcohol Experiment is to overcome those beliefs. Boom, 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 boom. The second layer of beliefs is beliefs about society. Like I won't be part of my mom's group if I'm not drinking. I won't fit in at work if I'm not drinking. I won't be able to network if I'm not drinking. I won't overcome my social anxiety if I'm not drinking. And so we do del delve into some of those societal based beliefs in the alcohol experiment and in this naked mind. But then there's this third layer of beliefs where if, if you don't deal with these beliefs, you will stay stuck. And that's absolutely true. And these are beliefs about yourself. And these beliefs sound like I'm not strong enough to parent my two kids unless I have a few glasses of wine. I'm not beautiful enough to, um, you know, be let loose in the bedroom unless I'm drunk. And these are the beliefs about self, the beliefs about worthiness and fitting in and being loved that are often subconscious that we're not really aware of that can keep us very, very stuck. And so Often you know if you're stuck in these beliefs about self, if it's like everything, I know everything, everything makes sense, I don't even want to drink, I'm totally good, and then I drink and I don't understand why, usually you have a subconscious belief about self. And uh, that's a big reason why I created the path is because we deal with that deeper level of belief, the why you're drinking in the first place. And a lot of people, if you're seeing success stories, they might have been drinking just for beliefs about substance or maybe about substance in society. And then once you overcome those beliefs, once you show the brain that that's not actually true, it's really easy to change. But if you have these deeper beliefs about yourself that you're medicating with alcohol that you're drinking for, 
then it is harder to change. And so the path was created in big part to address and to go deeper for people who might not get it with just reading the book or might not get it with the free alcohol experiment or the live alcohol experiment. And so you can always find out more about that at nakedmindpath.com. But I would say that there's another aspect to this as well. And that is basically readiness for change. So I forget where I first heard this and I've kind of added my own because I think there was three criteria for readiness for change when I heard this concept. And then I added my own two criteria for readiness for change. And I basically have five criteria for readiness for change. So like our path coaches, when they're coaching somebody through this, they might coach somebody through, okay, where are you on this level of readiness for change and where are you stuck? Where are you not quite ready to change? So the first is you have to believe that you must change. Like it has to feel like a must. Yes, I must change. Not a nice to, not a maybe I should, but a must. And that's where you get really true lasting change. Now, this isn't always true if you're just taking a 30 day break, you know, but when you're really in the position, like, um, you wrote in about, about being ready, like I'm done, I need to fix this. Then you enter into this must area. So you can change littler things, but changing a humongous habit like this, a must is really important. So for number one, you believe you must change. Number two, And this is vital. You have to believe that you can change. You have to believe that it's possible. Science shows that human beings, if we don't think something is possible, we won't do it. I I think there was a study. um, I know there was a study. I think it was done on giving people like riddles or worksheets and saying, hey, you know, I want you to work on this for this much time, but there's not actually a solution. And even though the task was to work on it just for an amount of time, because there wasn't a solution and the participants were told that there wasn't a solution, they wouldn't actually work on it. And that is really true in so many areas of our life. If we don't believe that change is possible and possible for us specifically, we won't even try. And so, you know, number one is you have to believe you must change. Number two is that you have to know that you can change. And if you're, if you're listening to me right now and you're like, I don't think I can then I would dive into something, pick up a copy of This Naked Life. That's 48 stories of people just like you who have truly changed, read their stories, you know, dive into the communities, understand that every time you see somebody, those comparison stories and you're seeing other people change, let them be a, oh, it is possible message to your brain rather than a, oh, why not me message and make that choice and make that decision. Um, The third is that you need to really believe that you need to do it now. There needs to be some urgency in it. And you know that this is true. I mean, this has been me forever with things like, okay, I'm going to eat less sugar, but you know, someday, like there's not a lot of urgency around it. It's something I want to do, but I want to do it someday. Or I'm going to drink less coffee, but I want to do it someday. And you know, it's just every day it's like, well, because there isn't any urgency. So I think there needs to be an urgency around it. So again, you have to believe that you must change moves from a nice to have to a must have, have to believe that you can change is number two. You need to believe that now is the time that there's some level of urgency to change um, is number three. And then number four is that I think that you need to realize and come and have the reckoning that change is up to you, that there's nobody coming. You know, I talk about <laughs> this concept with my friends of Rapunzel syndrome and we joke about it when we get into our Rapunzel syndrome and it's basically that we feel like we just need rescued from whatever it is, you know, whether it's parenting or I don't know what the case is, but we've started to say, you know what, I'm going to climb down my own hair. I'm going to rescue myself. Nobody's coming. This is up to me. And so you're looking for the next guru or the next podcast or the next book. And at some point you have to be like, no, this is up to me. I am the one responsible for this change. So that is number four. And then number five for readiness for change. I think that you need to get a point to a point where you are changing for you and you alone. And you might also, you might already be there, but there are a lot of people who are like, Oh, okay, I'm going to do this for my husband because he's so upset with me or my partner because they're so upset with me. Or, you know, I'm going to do this because my parents are so worried and, or I'm going to do this, you know, a big one I hear is for my kids. I can't do it for myself. I don't care that much about myself, but I'm going to do it for my kids. Well, here's the thing. If you don't do it for yourself, you won't have the ability to do it for your kids. You have to do it for yourself. And then that does become a really selfless act because then you do have, you know, the ability to give to your kids and to do it for their benefit as well. But it's kind of like you have to put your own oxygen mask on first before putting one on, on the child. The important part there is that It needs to be for you to a place where you are going to change it for you regardless of what everybody else wants or needs from you or expects from you. And that's where true change happens. So just to recap, 
you know, there's, first of all, we talked about this concept of the three S's or these, these reasons, these belief levels that we have. And sometimes you can get really stuck at that level of self-belief. And again, if you're stuck there, you can always join us at nakedmindpath.com and we dig into that level of self. So substance, society, and self, and those are the layers of belief. And then we've talked about this framework of these five things, criteria that really are important to be there for readiness for change. And I'm not talking little changes, like maybe a 30 day alcohol experiment. I'm talking big, lifelong, shifting everything, groundbreaking changes like quitting forever and you know, getting the headspace to do that and really sticking to it. And those are, you have to believe you must change. You have to believe you can change. You have to believe that now is the time to change. You have to believe that it is up to you and you alone. Nobody's coming to rescue you. And you have to be changing for you, not for your kids, not for your parents, not for your spouse, not for anybody else but for you. And if you are stuck on any of those, again, we have amazing coaches inside the path at nakedmindpath.com that really are trained to help you break through all of these different criteria. So if you're in this cycle, sometimes we do need a little external help. Let's be honest, this problem has been in our lives for so long. I know that like the more I got involved in community and the more I got involved at the time with Hello Sunday Morning, I really was benefited from that help. So don't make that wrong for yourself if that's what you need. But I think that is really why that, you know, you can look around and some people are changing so easily and others are really stuck. Those are some of the main reasons.